Hello, my name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software. Let's talk about implicit conversions. Implicit conversions are kind of a pain in the bottom. So what's going on? What happens is, is that either your database has got incorrect data types or your code has incorrect data types and SQL Server is helping you out. SQL Server can get in there and identify that this data type is not right, so I'll convert it over to this data type. And it does that for you behind the scenes, and that's all cool and wonderful and magic, you know, and that way, you know, you can pass in strings to dates and all that fun stuff, and, and, and they actually get converted over, and it's all great and wonderful and strings to numbers and all that cool stuff. And, and it's no big deal at all, except, of course, the fact that it causes a performance problem. Yeah, not in all cases, of course, but in some cases it does cause a performance problem. So, how do you see it? Well, you go and take a look at the execution plan, and the execution plans now have a warning that if there's um, a, a conversion that could cause um, issues, you'll, you'll get a little warning symbol on the execution plan. But, how are you going to go through and look at every flip in execution plan on all your stuff? Probably not. So, what can you do instead? Instead, I recommend you take a look at extended events. Let's go see how extended events can help you with monitoring for conversion. All right, we're going to start off with a query. Not so much um, looking at the extended events yet. We just want to look at a query. Now, this query, in theory, I'm using strings to pass to a date. So I'm going to have implicit conversions. So this could seriously impact, you know, what's going on. Let's let's um, just for purposes of our, our, our execution, let's clear the cache and then let's run the query and capture the execution plan. So I've got the execution plan turned on and we're going to capture the execution plan. So we'll execute this. The results come back. We have an execution plan. Now the execution plan suggests there's a missing index and so we should probably, you know, consider that, you know, if we were doing query tuning or whatnot. But the key here is, is that we've got a warning. So the warning will appear in the tooltip. Um, it's one of the few times I like the tooltips. Or we can go into the properties because if there's more than one warning, you want to go into here to see the full list. And so we can see that there is a plan affecting convert warning, and it's a cardinality estimation, and it's a convert in VARCAR 23 sales order ID. Wait a minute, though. That's not the date thing that we passed in. So what's going on with the dates? Well, let's go back over to the clustered index scan. Take a look at the properties there, and we can see that the predicate in the clustered index scan has changed our code. Um, we're now looking at full-blown dates, but those conversions are not the kinds of conversions that are going to affect us. Instead, we've identified a different conversion. Now, the conversion that we've identified is actually not directly affecting this plan. What we're talking about here is the sales order number. It's a calculated column, and it's doing a data conversion. And that data conversion could, if we were filtering on that value, cause issues with this query. And so the execution plan and the optimizer has identified that thing as a type conversion in the expression that could affect cardinality estimations. So this is how we can see it. This is how it behaves. Now let's do this. Let's take a look at the live data. What I've got is um, an extended event. I will show it to you in a second. And the extended event is capturing um, a number of things. But the one thing, the most important thing that's capturing is this event, the plan affecting convert event. Now, that plan affecting convert event will show you the compile time, um, the convert issue, and the expression that's causing the problem. That's all it's going to show you out of the gate. If you wanted to get more detail, you're going to do something else. Now let me, let's go in and take a look at the something else that we've done. Take a look at the properties for the implicit conversion extended event here that we have. Now it's obviously it's got a name at the top. Um, we could start the thing, watch live data, blah, blah, blah. But the most important thing here is, is that I've got causality tracking turned on. The causality tracking allows me to identify a set of events, put them in the correct order, and display them that way. 
So if we take a look at the events that we're capturing, I've got the plan effect and convert that we've already talked about, and it tells us occurs when a type convert issue affects the plan, and you guys can read the rest. I don't need to read it for you. You get the idea. But I'm also going uh, SQL batch completed and SQL batch starting. So I'm going to see the start of a query, the end of a query, and if there's any plan affecting converts in the middle, I'll see those. Because of the cardinality tracking, I can also see where they fit. So we know exactly which ones occurred where and when. Um, there's not a whole lot else to say about it. The configuration, you can see that I've got filters in place. The filter I've got is very simple. I'm only staying inside the AdventureWorks database. Um, but the event fields, the interesting bit is what does it show? And it shows you the three things that we talked about. Compile time, convert issue, and expression. But if we go back and take a look at what we actually captured, you'll see that we also captured a GUID for the activity ID and the sequence within that activity. So if we look back up here, we can see that um, there was a plan effect and convert. The SQL batch started. So in other words, the plan effect and convert was part of the compile of this query plan. The SQL batch started. Um, We've got the alerts to the conversion twice, and then the plan completed. Now, why two conversions? I actually am not sure about that. The one makes sense because it's executing, therefore we'd see it. And this one makes sense because it's compiling, therefore we would see it. But the extra one there, I'm not exactly sure why and how that came out. It's a few tiny bits of a microsecond later, so it's obviously two different events, but I don't know entirely what they are. However, the key phrase here is, is that we are going to be able to capture plan affecting converts without having to capture execution plans. Now, don't go away. We're not done. We've got a couple more points on this topic. But before I, before I give you those last bit of points, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Make sure you hit the like button. Make sure that you leave me a comment. Um, if this is helpful or if you need to see more on this topic or other topics, um, I take requests. So if there's something you need to learn about that, um, that you think I can help, please let me know. I will pitch in. But in general, you can see that extended events allows you to not only capture the behavior of the query itself, you know, reads, writes, duration, but to see detail of something like that implicit conversion so you can capture that kind of behavior on the fly without having to dig into execution plans to figure it all out. Yes, you probably want to look at those execution plans anyway, but it wouldn't it be better to identify the ones you need to pay attention to first and then dig into plans rather than try to dig through plans to find the stuff. That's, that's the key point here. Find it first and then get in. That's it. My name is Grant Fritchie. I work for Redgate Software.